Hey, all. My name is Jose Ocando. I'm a Chattanooga-based web designer and Webflow developer, currently working at Whiteboard, a creative agency in my hometown. And in this video, I want to talk about absolute positioning and how to use it to center things inside of other things. <laughs> um, so prime example is this video button, the white circle that has the play arrow inside of it. And if you want to be able to stack it on top of an image element, you're going to need to use absolute positioning. Now, I've seen a lot of folks struggle with this concept in general. What's the difference between static and relative and absolute fixed sticky? Um, so it's a pretty big concept, but here we're just going to focus on how to center things using absolute. Um, now, if you stick around, we're also going to cover how to use what we've learned to create a fun animation where the button actually follows the cursor. <laughs> okay, so if you're interested, stick around. Let's talk about absolute positioning. All right, so pretending for a moment this is a cooking show. We've got all of our ingredients on the counter. We're ready to go. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got my video button here. and I've got a Webflow Lightbox component that's got some stuff in it as well. And if I preview this, this is fully functioning. Click on that and it starts playing a, a how to make a sourdough bread video that I found on YouTube. <laughs> okay, and the first thing we're gonna do is nest video button inside of video card. And um, as expected, it's gonna push down the content. And that pushing down, that's called the box model. That's basically how websites behave. They say elements take up space, just like they do in the real world, and they move from left to right and top to bottom. So when I added video card in here, it pushes the content below it down. Um, so to avoid that, to stop video button from pushing the card down, we just have to change it to position absolute. So notice that now the card is in the middle vertically like it was before, but our video button isn't in the right spot and it's hiding behind the image. Before we fix that, let's talk about what happened. When we set video button to position absolute, basically what happened is that all of the elements around it ratio 166, caption, and this thing, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, it's kind of like saying, hey, we're gonna ignore that this thing exists. It no longer is in the realm of the box model. It's on its own dimension. <laughs> uh, everything is gonna ignore it. Um, and that's what we want because the image, we want the button to be on top of the image. For that to happen, we have to break outside of the box model. We need position absolute or absolute positioning. Okay, how do we get the video button on top of the image? Now, if you're guessing, I'm gonna assume that you've guessed Z index and you would be wrong. <laughs> uh, actually, you were right. Uh, it's true, we can use Z index. I'm gonna use that now. I'm just gonna set this to one and our video button is gonna pop up on top of the image. The reason that works is because um, ratio 166 does not have a Z index. The default is Z index of zero. And so by making video button Z index of one, uh, it is now stacking on top. Um, now, if we did this over here and we change this to two, notice that the image is not gonna stack on top of everything because two is greater than one. Okay, but I actually don't like to use Z index. I like to use it as infrequently as possible. And um, the answer I was looking for <laughs> is that I'm just gonna use the natural order of things in the navigator to position it. I'm gonna leave this at Z index one for now. We're gonna come back to this in just a little bit. All right, so this is future Jose breaking in. You can tell cause I'm wearing my headphones <laughs> um, to say that I forgot to come back to the Z index issue. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so, okay, let's cover it now. Um, so what we did previously was we came down here and we said, all right, we're going to set the Z index to one. And you know what? That did work. It did actually move the button over the image. But the reason that I don't like to use it is because, um, one, two reasons. One, um, I like for my CSS styles to be as limited as possible, as clean as possible. I don't want anything in here littering things because anytime that you make a change, uh, it's gonna impact things. And so the more things that I have in here, the more likely it is it's gonna break something or cause a bug. Um, so the cleaner the style, the better. 
So one, just not having that in here is gonna present is gonna prevent weird layering issues happening that I'm not yet realizing are gonna happen. Uh, so by removing that and just relying on the DOM, the navigator, uh, I'm ensuring that that's not gonna come back to bite me later. Second is Z index, um, it can get a little hairy <laughs> because uh, it doesn't stack well. So let's say that I have an object inside of another object. The parent is set to Z index of one and the child is set to Z index of three. Um, the issue there is that if it's nested inside of a one, it can't break out of that. It's like it can't move up to Z index three. Uh, and so if you're relying on the Z index, uh, then it's gonna be broken in those types of situations. So as much as possible, I like to not use Z index. And if you do things right, you very rarely actually have to use it. Um, there are of course instances where you do. The navigation bar, for example, is a great use case for it. Uh, but like I said, I like to use it as frequently as possible. And also the other method is also just easier to use. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm simply just gonna take ratio 166 and stack it on top of video button. And notice that now we see the video button and the image behind it. Um, let's talk about why that works. Um, browsers, when they load a website, it's kind of like they reach into the HTML and they say, all right, there's all this stuff that I have to display on this browser. So they take the first thing that they see, which is gonna be at the top of the list, and they just kind of carry it over and stack it on the website. And they keep doing that over and over and over again. <laughs> okay, so it goes from top to bottom. So the browser sees video card and it sees ratio 166. And that, by the way, is holding our image. And so it says, oh, okay, great. I'm gonna take that image, come over and stack it on the site. And then it sees video button next. And it takes it, moves it over and stacks it on top of the image. So it's a little bit counterintuitive because you would think, oh, well, if it's on the top, if ratio one is on top, wouldn't it show up on top? And the answer is no, again, because the browser is seeing this first stacking it, then coming back and stacking the next thing on top of it. So really the last thing, if I got rid of this, you can see the, the um, lines are actually stacking on top of the video button. The last thing in the list is gonna be the closest in elevation to the user. Um, so I hope that makes sense. All right, now, how do we start getting a video button over to the middle? Because it's over here in the top left. And to do that, we're gonna be using the top, left, right, and bottom style attributes here in position. Now if I do uh, top left, in other words, 0%, 0%, and these are set to auto, it's gonna stay exactly where it was before. If I pin it to the top right, in other words, zero and 0% 0 uh, top and right, and auto left and bottom, it's gonna be in the top right, and we can do this with all of the different corners. Okay, now the reason that this is working is because this is set to absolute and it's relative to video card, our lightbox component. That is what uh, it is relative to. Um, and if we took off position relative on the video card, that would no longer be the case because relative means hey, anything that is nested inside of me that's position absolute, it's going to be relative to me. To me. <laughs> um, I forget what that's from, but anyways. Okay, so let's say I take off position relative. Notice that um, our caption went away because that is set to position absolute as well. And our video button is down here. And if I scoot over to position attributes, you notice that it's saying, hey, this is relative to the body. Um, and so it's behaving the same way that it was before. It's just that it's no longer relative to the card. So let's go back to video card and set it to position relative. Okay. Next up, we're gonna set um, these top and left values to 50%. Okay, so basically the idea is, oh, hey, okay, if 0% um, uh, top and left means that it's pinned to the top left corner, wouldn't it make sense that 50% top and 50% left is gonna be in the exact center of um, the element? 
And you just look at it, you can say, no, that's actually not correct. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> okay, so if I go to display none and take this off, I created um, this little target so that we can see what's going on. So with video button, we can see that it actually is positioned right in the middle of video card. It's just that the anchor point or the origin point from whence it is emanating is the top left corner. So it's starting in the dead center of video card and emanating out. So that's why it looks like it's not actually in the middle when it really is. Okay, but how do we change the origin point or make it emanate from <laughs> the middle? And I'm so glad you asked. We're gonna do that with a transform. So down here under 2D and 3D transforms, we're gonna click add and we're gonna say, I want you to move to the left 50%. Not quite done, but notice that now the video button is centered horizontally right in the middle. Let's talk about why that works so you understand what's going on. So up here, under position absolute, these values are relative to video card. We've already talked about that. But to be more explicit about it, let's say that I make this 100%. Notice that the video button is now um, moving down 100% of the size of the video card. Um, let's say I move this 25%. This is now moving the origin point is up here. It's now moving 25% down the card. Okay, so it's all about the size of the card. But the transform down here is relative to itself, not the card. So when I say, hey, I want you to move over negative 50%, what the website is doing is it's saying, okay, I need you to move over 50% of the width of video button. All right, so we just gotta do the same thing with Y, so negative 50%. So effectively what we've done is move the origin point where the video button emanates from to the very center. Let me get rid of our display lines. Actually, I'm gonna leave that there for a second because what I wanna point out is what I see a lot of people doing is using fixed values uh, to try and get this. So instead of um, having this here, Let's temporarily hide that. Um, they just tried to kind of eyeball it and say, okay, well, maybe something around here and maybe something around here. And they just kind of eyeball it to see if something like that will work. Well, this kind of works. Keep in mind that if I change the size of the button um, on mobile, let's do uh, 64 by 64, this no longer works. Um, so it's a definitely a broken method. Let me go ahead and change that back to 80 by 80. Um, and turn this back on. Now let's go ahead and change it now. And notice that this time when I change things, the button is still staying right in the middle. So this is kind of like a foolproof way. It doesn't matter if I make it bigger, if I make it smaller, it's gonna stay right in the middle. That's why uh, using this is way better uh, than trying to eyeball it and use um, values here to get things in the middle. All right, so uh, that is pretty much it. We're actually done, but <laughs> if you stuck around and you're still watching, I wanted to add in a couple of things um, to say thank you for watching. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna create an animation that will have the video button kind of follow our mouse when we're hovering on top of video card. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is uh, we're gonna take off this transform. And we're gonna use what we just talked about uh, with the transforms. We're gonna use that lesson and apply it in our animation. So I'm gonna get on video card, go to the animations, um, add a new one. And I wanna do mouse over element. So animate while the cursor moves over the element. That's exactly what we want. And we wanna add a new one. We'll just call it video button follow. And we want to use move. Uh, whoops. We wanna make sure we have video button selected. There we go. Okay. Um, 
So if I live preview this, notice that when my cursor is at the very top left, the mouse X actions is at zero and the mouse Y is at zero. That's kind of like this is a chart. If you like, remember geometry class or anything like that, <laughs> if I move towards the middle, uh, notice that, uh, oh man, I really want this to both say 50%. There we go. Ugh, whatever. Okay. Notice that um, I'm now at 50% or thereabouts on both of those values. And if I move over to the bottom right, notice that they're at close to 100%. So we can use that to our advantage. So let's go ahead and add one more here. Oops. I think I got 58. Let's get this to 50. And is this at 50? Okay. So basically at 50%, we want to do the same thing that we just did. So we want X to be negative 50% and we want Y to be negative 50%. What that means is that when um, the mouse is right here in the middle of the card, the button is also going to be in the middle of the card. And then let's just move things around. So X, maybe we can do negative 100%. And that means that when it's over here, if I live preview this, you can see when it's over here on the left, the button is gonna move to the left. And when it's all the way on the right, we wanna move it more to the right. So here, instead of, um, so this is negative 100, this is negative 50, let's do 0%. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the Y axis. So when it's in the middle, we want it to be negative 50. So when it's at zero, maybe we want to do negative uh, 100. And same thing for here, 0%. Um, why does that say? Oh, okay. All right, so if we preview this, now we see that when we're hovering over um, the card, it's moving. We need to do a couple more things to make sure that this is working right. Um, Notice that the animation resting state is 50% and 50%. That means that it's pretending that if you're not hovering on the card, your cursor is right in the middle. And that's exactly what we want because we want the button to be in the middle. And I'm gonna advance the smoothing to something like 90%. There's lots of lag. Uh, so now when our cursor is not on the card, it's pretending that the cursor is in the middle of the card and remember, we set the values to negative 50% X, negative 50% Y. That means it's in the middle. And when I hover over the card, it is now following the cursor. Um, let me make, make this 80. Maybe it's a bit too much. All right. And then notice when I hop off of the card, it kind of snaps back in place, which is really nice. Okay. And we can do another thing too, just to make this even more fun. Let's say that um, we want the button uh, to go from a background fill um, or to go from an outline to a background fill. So what we can do is let's get rid of the background color. Let's add 2% or a, a stroke of two, make sure that it's white. And we also want to, what do I want to do? Um, make sure that this is set to 0% but white. That way when it moves from 0 to 100, it's 0 white to 0, or 100 white instead of 0 black to 100 white. <laughs> okay. So we got that there. And then we're going to do on a video card, add a mouse hover animation. video card oops, hover on and we're going to say that on hover on the background color goes to white right, let's say if that worked okay so that is working as planned and then uh, on hover off let's go ahead and duplicate this change the title and go back to a 0% white. Okay, 
something. Now, the, the nice thing about this is, um, and the background shot's kind of bugging me a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but yeah, as we hover on, it gets trans it gets opaque. Hover off, it's transparent. Let me go ahead and take off the drop shadow because I said I was going to ignore it, but I can't. Okay, so we'll just hide these. Okay, now um, the other thing that we want to do is um, this SVG. Now I just copied and pasted this um, from uh, a website. You can do this from Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, whatever. Um, just add an embed and you'll get this um, code. Now uh, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. And that means that it's not based on pixels, but it's based on vector points inside of a chart, the view box. It's kind of like saying, hey, the view box is 24 pixels by 24 pixels. And there are these dots inside of that chart where the vector points are. And there's a stroke that is um, going around those, that path made by those three vector points. Um, and so it's saying the color of the stroke is black, zero, 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 zero. We could go in and just change this to white. And that gets us part of the way there, but not fully, right? Because when I hover over, um, now we can't see the play arrow. So I can actually do something called use current color. And I've covered this in a previous uh, tutorial, <laughs> but I think it's uh, helpful to cover it here. And we're going to go ahead and set it to white. Okay. Now notice that if I change it from white, video button, the SVG is now changing color too. Pretty nifty. Okay, so now we can go back to video card, go into our hover animation and say, all right, when you hover on with video button, go ahead and set the text color to black. And when you hover off, go ahead and set the text color back to white. Okay, so if we did that correctly, now, when we hover over this, the color of the arrow is changing uh, along with the color of the button. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I think the real thing I wanted to communicate was um, how absolute positioning can be your friend. It doesn't have to be the scary thing that's hard to understand. Um, and I hope that you use it in your projects uh, moving forward. So thanks, guys. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Go ahead and subscribe. I know I haven't posted in a long time, but I'm hoping to do more of these little shorts. And um, yeah, excited to do more. See you guys in the next one.